Now that the M2 MacBook Pro has been released, how does it stack up against the beloved M1 MacBook Air? Is the M1 MacBook Air better value? Which MacBook will suit your needs better? Well, in this video, I'm going to attempt to answer this question by comparing the two in everything from coding, Adobe workflows, video editing, general productivity, 3D workflows, gaming, thermals, and more. Because let's be honest, 1300 US dollars is a lot of money. So can you save a few bucks by going with the cheaper M1 MacBook Air? Well, let's find out. Okay, let's start with the most important factor first, and that is price difference and value proposition. Now, let's be honest, most people buying these laptops aren't going to be doing anything more intensive than web browsing and emails. I'll touch on this later on, but both MacBooks do this very well, so this video is going to focus more on performance differences. So if you wanna do some coding, light video editing, or gaming, for example. So traditionally, the MacBook Pro has always been 300 US dollars more expensive than the M1 MacBook Air, and it's the same with the new M2 MacBook Pro. But don't forget that because the M1 MacBook Air is now almost two years old, there are a ton of really good deals you can find, especially on the used market. Right now, you can buy a relatively lightly used M1 MacBook Air for around $700 to $800. There are also even deals or sales for new and refurbished models from the official Apple Store and big retailers like Best Buy, which means you can often find M1 Airs for around $800 to $850 brand new. So instead of the value difference between the M1 MacBook Air and M2 MacBook Pro being just $300, it's now between $500 to $600 dollars instead. So just keep that in the back of your mind when we look at performance differences later on. Now, just before we get into the next section, a quick word from the sponsor of this video. Optimize performance and increase the storage space on your Mac with Trend Micro Cleaner One Pro. Cleaner One Pro is an all-in-one Mac cleaning and optimization tool which comes with many useful features. You can free up disk space by removing junk and hidden files with just one click. And it also provides you with a visual and interactive map which will help you filter, manage, and free up large files on your disk. Another great feature is the file shredder, which allows you to erase the leftover files from deleted apps or trash, making them unrecoverable. So click the link in the description below to check out Cleaner One Pro, a must have Mac cleaner and optimization tool. Okay, let's take a second to chat about the physical differences between these two MacBooks. There really isn't much. Obviously the Air is slightly thinner and lighter, and some people enjoy the tapered chassis on the Air that doesn't press on your wrists while typing like the MacBook Pro sometimes can. But you do get a couple of nice features on the M2 MacBook Pro that aren't on the Air, like the touch bar, slightly brighter screen, slightly better battery life, and better speakers, microphone, and headphone jack. But the biggest difference is that the M2 MacBook Pro has an internal fan, while the Air is of course fanless. Okay, let's start looking at the performance differences between these two laptops. Note, in this video, I'm comparing the base models, so neither MacBook has any RAM or SSD upgrades, for example. Starting with the CPU, both the M1 and M2 have a very similar 8-core CPU. It's just that the M2 CPU is ever so slightly improved and is actively cooled by a fan, which boosts performance. For multi-core performance, there's only about a 25% difference between the two, which is a really impressive result from the M1 Air. Moving to single-core, both are almost exactly the same, so you won't see much of a difference in applications that rely on individual core speeds like Photoshop, for example. Now, if you're a coder or developer, for short code compiles, the difference is minimal. The M1 MacBook Air is about 10% slower, but when you move to a larger project, in this case, compiling the Firefox code base, the M2 MacBook Pro really starts to pull away due to the more powerful cores and active cooling from the fan. But even then, I don't think this difference is too big, especially when you consider the price difference between the two. Apple Silicon in general is just quite good at anything coding and development related. Moving on to music production, you'll see a slight improvement on the M2 Pro, but you likely won't even notice it. And what about Adobe apps? Well, starting with After Effects, neither machine will run super well because After Effects typically wants at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. But looking at a 2D animation I sometimes use, the M2 MacBook Pro is faster, but only just. 
With Premiere Pro, however, the M2 MacBook Pro is significantly better than the Air when looking at real life workflows. And if we break these scores down even further, you can see why. Particularly with exporting, where the M2 MacBook Pro is almost 70% faster. And effects, which is almost twice as powerful when compared to the Air. Also, just general timeline scrubbing and playback will be around 30% better on the M2 Pro. Now, if you're wondering about Photoshop and Lightroom, both of these apps perform about 20% better on the M2 MacBook Pro compared to the M1 MacBook Air. But again there, I don't think you'll notice a massive difference between the two because if you're just editing cached photos on Lightroom, for example, or you've only got a few layers on Photoshop, you won't notice a difference between the two. Moving on to video editing, one of the biggest differences in the M2 chip is the addition of ProRes hardware support and the ProRes encode and decode engines. Now, don't forget the M1 already has something similar, but only for H.264 and HEVC. So what this means is that if your workflow consists of at least some ProRes footage, you will see a significant benefit. Also, remember that the M2 MacBook Pro has an additional three GPU cores and doubling of the memory bandwidth when compared to the M1 Air, and it also has a fan. So starting with a real life multicam project in DaVinci Resolve, which to be quite honest is probably overkill for either of these devices, here we have four streams of color corrected 4K footage from assorted GoPro, Sony, and Blackmagic cameras. The most important factor for video editing is timeline performance. So let's look at that first. The M2 is better in every way. Real time scrubbing and playback is smoother with less dropped frames. But when it comes to rendering, the difference is there, but not quite by as much as you'd expect. For 3D and effects stuff, the M2 is far superior though, like when adding stabilization to a 2.5 minute 120 FPS 4K clip. Now again, if your workflow contains a lot of ProRes, the M2 is the easy choice, right? Because of that new ProRes hardware support. For example, look at the difference when editing and then exporting a ProRes only project on Final Cut Pro. The M2 absolutely smokes the M1 Air. So all in all, I think the M2 MacBook Pro was clearly the better performer when it comes to video editing. Although I was still surprised to see just how well the M1 MacBook Air held up in in comparison. And again, remember the M1 MacBook Air typically costs about five to 600 US dollars less. So I think if you just do a little bit of video editing every now and then, and you stick to mostly relatively simple 1080p and maybe 4K timelines with not a lot of heavy effects, I think the M1 Air is actually gonna be a really good choice for you. Moving on to 3D workflows, let's start with Blender. I'm using the 3.2 version here, and when running the CPU benchmark, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference. The GPU benchmark, on the other hand, tells a different story. The M2 is noticeably more powerful, and over time, this difference increases, again, due to the fan. For shorter renders that only take a few minutes, there's not a massive difference. Although once you start getting into more than about 10 minutes render time, the M2 MacBook Pro really starts to pull away as you can see here. And this is the same story with other 3D software like Octane X or even Cinema 4D. You'll see about a 20 to 40% improvement on the M2 depending on the software and length of render. Now, for all the gamers out there, this is gonna be a really easy comparison. The M2 smokes the M1 by anywhere from 40% to a massive 50%. This is due to the GPU cores not only being clocked higher, but being increased from seven cores to 10. The reason for this huge difference is, unlike other workflows, the GPU cores are under full load the entire time while gaming. And the addition of the fan or active cooling on the M2 MacBook Pro is gonna start to really make a big difference over time. Now, while on the topic of gaming, I'll also compare fan noise and thermals. Obviously the Air does not have a fan, but the fan noise on the Pro really doesn't get that loud and certainly isn't obnoxious like some other laptops. The CPU and GPU cores reach similar temperatures on the two when under load, but the Pro can mitigate these temperatures much easier by ramping up the fan when necessary. The external temperatures are also different with the chassis of the Air getting noticeably hotter than the Pro. If I flip them around and look at the base of the chassis, which is the part often on your lap, again, the Pro is much cooler 
and might be more comfortable for those that don't like warm laptops. Although either MacBook only gets warm when you're doing something intensive like gaming or rendering. In fact, when using the Pro, the fans rarely even need to turn on. Moving on to SSD speed, the 256GB SSD on the M1 MacBook Air is actually much faster than the M2 MacBook Pro by about 50%. This is because the Pro only has one NAND chip installed for some reason versus two on the Air. Now, if you want to learn more about this and why this was done, I made a whole video on it if you want to check that out, and I'll also link it down below. But in a nutshell, transferring files or reading them from your SSD will be slower and multitasking is also slightly affected by the slower speeds which brings me to my next section general productivity and battery life so does this slower ssd have any noticeable effect when it comes to day-to-day -day usage well kind of but only when you're doing really heavy multitasking again that video i mentioned before goes into this in more detail so even though the M2 MacBook Pro is faster in everything else, including its new DDR5 RAM compared with slower DDR4 on the M1 MacBook Air, when it comes to just switching between apps, loading Google Sheets on Safari, or browsing websites, for example, they're both about the same and I doubt you'll notice a difference. And this also translates to battery life. It is technically better on the M2 MacBook Pro, but the M2 chip also consumes more power than the M1 when under load. So they kind of cancel each other out. And for simple usage like watching YouTube videos or just doing emails, you'll get a few more hours out of the Pro, but nothing too crazy. But in the grand scheme of things, the battery life on both of these machines are just so good to begin with. I think once you start getting past about 15 hours on a laptop battery, you kind of stop caring about a few hours difference here and there. So yeah, really interesting to compare these two. I think in terms of just pure value, it has to go to the M1 MacBook Air. For its currently discounted price, which is only going to get lower and lower, you get a pretty sweet bang for your buck. And in a lot of areas, it keeps up with the brand new M2 MacBook Pro quite nicely especially with anything CPU related. And let's be honest, most people will be using either of these machines for relatively simple, just day-to-day -day tasks like emails, your web browsing, Word documents, all that kind of stuff. So all of these performance differences and graphs are probably useless to 90% of people buying these machines. But again, once you start getting into GPU heavy stuff like gaming or video editing, that's where the M2 Pro really does start to pull ahead and might be worth the extra cost for some people. For me personally, if I had to buy one of these machines brand new from Apple right now, I'd probably go for the M2 MacBook Pro for the fan and also the increased performance. But if I was looking on the second hand market at say an eight or $700 M1 MacBook Air versus the M2 MacBook Pro, I would definitely go with a second hand M1 MacBook Air. But apart from that, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.